it wasn't a team of people that built it, it was, it was one guy. And you see his priorities. It, it, it's his personality is just put on display for everybody. And I cannot wait to meet him because I can tell he and I are a lot alike. to prioritize and you see his priorities it, it's, it's his personality it's just put on display for everybody and I cannot wait to meet him because I can tell he and I are a lot alike this Frankenstein machine has a name odd rod and it has a builder Tommy Reicheldurfer a machinist by trade, Tommy loves making things with old tools and has transformed his first generation Miata into a steampunk hot rod. It's powered by a carbureted Ford 302 V8. That motor has been stroked out to 331 cubic inches and is good for 470 horsepower, 460 pound feet of torque at the crank. Not bad for a car that feels like it weighs less than I do. A guy like me sees a car like this, the first question I have to ask is, why? Why this? I ask myself that same question every day. Um, but it started out as just, you know, to have something that was that was really fast. And um, like grew up on British roadsters, so Miatas were kind of the, uh, you know, the natural evolution um, from the things that I grew up on. And this, you know, this kind of became um, a mashup of all the other influences that I had um, as a kid, you know, like, Formula One, um, you know, traditional supercars like, uh, you know, like Countach's and everything. There's like, you know, some kind of angular elements from those. Yeah. Now, when, when um, I see the, the shop behind me, mm -hmm. I see you have a type. What, what is that type? Uh, small, lightweight, and as analog as possible. It certainly that's, is analog. That's, that's pretty much what it comes down to. Keep everything as, as mechanical as possible and less will go wrong. Yeah. yeah so then uh, my question is, when it was stock, what was the first thing that led you down this path? Um, it was a shop that I was working at that built, um, they specialized in big block and small block Fords. And that's, that's kind of where, you know, where, where I learned about them and, and kind of fell in love with them. Um, all the things that are, that are really great about that, that one platform. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's where the V8 swap idea originally came from, and then um, everything else on the car just kind of evolved after the uh, after the initial swap. So out of all, everything I see here, what what have you done on it? You've done the vast majority. You personally, uh, everything except for uh, the louvers and 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 the louvers. I think I think literally everything else has been just my incompetent hands. <laughs> so you show me. Okay. What it takes to drive this thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's a. Yeah, we got the hydraulic handbrake. Um, that's the uh, that's the dimmer switch for the uh, for the high and low beams. Um, that's the makeshift line lock for doing burnouts. Mechanical mechanical line lock. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. And so where's the ABS? 
Ha! <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> so ABS you, is, is modulating with your foot. That's right. So. It doesn't have power steering. It doesn't have assisted brakes. It is you connected to the road in the coolest way possible. The wind rushing through my hair, the, the experience, the sun, a little couple of rocks hit me in the face. Now, all of that is what makes this so in the moment. I am in this car. I'm enjoying this moment. That's what I love about cars. And of course, that's what is so attractive about cars to people who love too. Yeah, yeah, it can drive and get you to places, but, but something like this reminds you why you do it. It's always an emotion. And this car is full of emotion. These nice little smooth ups and downs and everything just really show to me how fun it is to drive a car as Frankenstein as this is. As part car, part metal, part, it's just, it's just a little bit of everything. And, and yet it's so polished. Okay, so I'm not a big piston engine guy, but I noticed you did something really unique here. Well, what yeah. Am I, what am I looking at underneath that metal? Oh uh, well, you're looking at the at the rocker arms and everything that goes on um, on the top end of a of an engine, basically. Okay, that's something you made. That's something you yeah, you yeah. wanted to do. Yeah. yeah, make them on the on the bridge port, and um, now I have a guy that does part of it on a CNC, and I, I finish it on the bridge port. That's awesome, and that seems to be kind of a theme of the car that you can see. Through it. Yeah, uh, well, that idea started there, but now there's a there's a see-through section um, above the differential and everything, so you can see the you know you can watch it grenade. The, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you can see the the axles and the drive shaft and everything move. You know, being that it is a carbureted V8 aerodynamic car, I feel like I feel like we have a place we could go. Where might that be? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> something. As I get older, I'm starting to understand the value of time and how quickly time passes. And you know what? This car shows you just how much time he put into it and what he chose to use his limited time in the garage doing. When you see a car as polished as this one, you see the details, all the riveting and all the metalwork. He put extra time into that. that is, that's the details. That's that 80-20 rule where 20% of the work takes 80% of the time, and this is clearly an insane amount of time that he's never getting back. And you know what's cool about that? That almost immortalizes his spirit in the car. It's, it's an extension of him that he gets to communicate with all of us. It's almost like a greeting card. It's almost his way of starting the conversation with us without having to say a single word. And that's, to me, why the tuner culture, the American tuner culture, is really more of an emotion than just a collection of car parts. And that's why I wish more people got into the tuner scene. Their personality just shows through that, and it's so unique. Each one of them are different, and you know what? I don't have to like it. It's an extension of them. They choose what they get to do, and they get to love it. <laughs>